Yeah. All right, with all that, Josh. Cool. Uh, Rylan was like, hey, does anyone want to give talks? You should give talks. And I was like, that sounds like a thing that people should do. I'll give one. And then he was like, great, go for it. And I was like, <laughs> I have to do this. Uh, so this is my uh, first time taking a stab at something like this. Um, I've been, hey. <laughs> uh, yes, off to a strong start. Um, I... My goal was to not be a complete waste of everybody's time. So partial waste of some people's time, no problem. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then, um, like, not throw up. So, so far, so good. Yeah. Uh, so a little bit about me. Um, my name's Josh. I've been working for, where well, I started about a year and a half ago, my first dev job. I just graduated from Turing. Thank you. Uh, you might have to do that a few more times. Uh, graduated from Turing, like, two years ago, and then I've been working for a company called Wombat Security. They do phishing simulations and education. So that's P-H-S-I-H-I-N-G. Uh, so if you're a large company with 50,000 employees, you don't want them clicking on the links that they shouldn't be clicking on in their email. So you would use Wombat. We have a bunch of like educational tools. And then the tool that I work on um, does the simulated phishing attacks. So it's like email marketing, but we're trying to get you to like your bank account has been compromised. Enter your username and password here to regain access. And then if someone like clicks the link, they get redirected to like this educational stuff and report back. <laughs> we don't actually take the user. Uh, <laughs> the um, yeah. you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> I mean, th that is precisely correct. You get redirected to an educational landing page that has a screenshot of the email and can like highlight the stuff that is like here's like mouse over the URL and look for this kind of stuff. It's actually wildly effective. Um, Can I give you my do, mom's email address? <laughs> <laughs> do, do, does, does for you, other reasons, is there a push notification to your HR system when someone clicks on the link? So <laughs> there shouldn't be. The formal recommendation is don't fire people if they click the links. Um, but if enough people, like some of the companies that we have, or our customers, I think some folks have gotten uh, terminated if they just keep like falling for the same phishing attacks. Wow. Um, yeah, so that's a really problem. good excuse if you don't want to open email, just be like, oh, I thought it was a fish. Because they fish us all the time. Uh, right. So anyway, um, let's see. So there, blah, blah, blah. Um, cool. So the next couple minutes I'll be talking about, so some of the context as well is I'll be talking about performance a lot today. Um, so last year, Wombat got acquired by Proofpoint. So now I'm a Proofpoint employee, um, and then I. So Wombat is based in Pittsburgh. I work. I live in Golden. I work remotely for them. My team is remote, um, and then the team that I work on was acquired by Wombat in 2015 um, for other like the threat simulation tool. So there's a lot of like, and and then before I started, there's only two developers on the team, um, and they were kind of like drowning underneath acquisition and integration stuff, and then like the bug reports was catching up. So it was just like an unloved project for a while. Now we have four developers, now we have five developers, so we're like going through and trying to like make it work a little bit better. So we're talking about the engineering case for performance, which should be really familiar to all of you. Um, I don't imagine much of, like some stuff I say will probably be novel and new, but probably not all of it. Um, I want to make a case for the dangers of the engineering case for import, uh, improving your performance. Um, and then I'll tie it together with a story that kind of led me to all, all into this thing. So. Uh, lastly, I'll be borrowing from this guy. Anyone know him? Yeah. 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 He's amazing. Nate Dawson. Yeah. So I stand I on shoulders Nate. of giants. Um, like, if you're like that thing that he said, it doesn't quite seem right. Probably isn't. I would just go check here for like the source <laughs> right. of truth. Yeah. Um, but it's been super helpful to me. So, what is the first rule of optimization? Find the bottom. Don't do it early. Don't do it early. Smart. I heard. Yeah. Some. I heard. Premature. premature. Yeah. Premature optimization is the root of all evil. Um, I'm going to, you might have not be as familiar with this quote uh, from another software <laughs> luminary. Uh, but, so that's one of the cases I'm going to make, uh, is like benchmarking and profiling is important, but it's possible that you can even be premature with that. Um, so what is benchmarking and profiling? It's flip sides of the same coin. Um, they narrow down where you have problems, and then if your like, proposed solution works, then you can ship it to production. So if you're not, basically, you spend your employer's payroll in the most valuable way if you're trying to make the app faster, rather than like optimizing something that doesn't get called often or doesn't matter that much. So um, you can't. I would argue you can't responsibly optimize your app until you've got profiling and benchmarking in place, right? Does that seem kind of then like I'm the new person here? So if anyone's like that's wrong, I would be curious 
to here. Well, without benchmarking, I, you don't know if you're making improvements. Right. I won't say that it's well. I won't say that it's wrong, and I agree with, it, with what you guys have just said. But I will say that like if I'm writing code and I realize like oh that's going to be inefficient, I'll switch it before I've got. You know, yeah. I realize that I've got an N plus one thing I just built all the sure, sure. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, to me, it's really all about the end, like the end goal, right? Yeah. Like if it's like, you know, it seems kind of slow, then I don't know that you need to go through the whole benchmark thing. Right? Yep. Like you just kind of do uh, what's that bullet or whatever the yeah. N plus one thing yep. is. But if it's something where like, hey, we really need to have this, most engineers want to have like a fixed goal, right? Because yep. otherwise, there's no done. Yep. So that's what I would say is that the most important thing before you do any optimization is to find what done is. If it's like, make it a little bit faster. Right. You like got two milliseconds faster and I just spent two days on that. Was <laughs> that really a good use of time? And as a consultant from a business perspective, like if I were going into a contract to optimize some code, like 100% like just to make sure that. Yep. Yep. Cool. You guys have heard this story a little bit before. So um, why do we optimize in the first place? Kind of a grab bag of what you all said. Like, if there's a problem, you want to get rid of it, you have to figure out how to like identify that there is a problem and then like implement the fix and it's like taking half the time that it was before so we can propose that it's better. If you're just like clicking and you're like, ah, eh, seems slow, seems a little better, like that's not quite usually su uh, sufficient. Um, so I would say that we as developers have a lot to offer from a technical perspective of how to benchmark and profile and how to even reason about when to do this inside of your application and then once you have your metrics in place, how to go about fixing it. Like that's our cup of tea. But I think that we miss a lot if we just attack the technical side of it. Because um, the technical side of performance, I would say, is just like how fast do things go. Um, so how would, or I'm proposing that there's this possibility that you could prematurely benchmark and profile your application. Um, and the reason is, which some of you have alluded to, uh, the business. Like The business is ultimately the one that's driving uh, how you spend your time and what features you're working on and if this is an acceptable problem that happens infrequently or if it's happening all the time. I know we don't all love the business. Um, there seems to be <laughs> kind of like a lot of suits and weird businessy things that people do. <laughs> like, I feel like the business kind of gets a bad rep, rap a lot of times. Um, we don't always love our customer support teams because um, at least the product that I work on, like they file bugs and we sometimes fix them. Uh, <laughs> so it's not, they're not like, hey, you guys are killing it today. They're like, here you go. Uh, here's a couple more tickets. I thought you guys were smart. Uh, <laughs> that's what I always try to like, educate them on. I'm like, we don't know what we're doing. Um, you got your marketers that, I don't know, do cool stuff collaboratively but yeah. like so I feel like it's pretty common for our teams to kind of like try to like wall off our turf a little bit and be like man they just don't understand like the realities of software development like we've worked really hard on this rails upgrade and they're just like oh it looks the same but you don't understand <laughs> uh, so what I would recommend is um, we could tie it back to the money. Uh, so we tend to be a well-compensated profession, which is awesome. Uh, I hope in response to that you would say something like, well, I'm well-compensated, but it's fair, or I deliver that value. Like, you do deliver the value that you get compensated for. Um, but we're highly dependent on the other functions of the business. Uh, and I think it's a pre like appropriate to kind of work with the other domains, um, kind of recognizing the contributions. Like, if your sales team left, there might be less beer pong, or I don't know how your sales teams works. Um, <laughs> but you also wouldn't have any new customers. And eventually the paychecks would stop. Uh, and sales is really, really hard. Like, we have our all hands, and they'll be like, hey, so and so crushed it. They got like these big deals this quarter. And then as the person's walking off, they're like, hope you can do it again next quarter. And they're just, they've got to be like, oh, I just did it really well. <laughs> like, now this is my new minimum standard. Mm -hmm. uh, sales is brutal. Um, some for, yeah, so I have deep respect, usually respect for sales teams. Um, <laughs> so we should appreciate it. Um, so there's often, you can hear either explicit or implicit um, like objections to when like the business is kind of getting in our domain. Um, so I'm kind of grab bagging from stuff other folks on my team have said or just like friends that are developers. Um, 
sometimes you hear like I just want to write like clean code. Um, so they don't really want they want to like isolate themselves from what code what their code is going to solve ultimately or um, like they write the tickets and I just move them across the board. <clears throat> so that's not having or that's kind of abstaining from having any involvement with like writing the tickets or like how are we like what feature should we work on um, or like the businesses above me. Um, there's the amazing T-shirt which I hope you've all seen. Get push, get paid. Oh, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> missed out. But like, yeah. like I write code and then I like submit it and then I get paid and that that that's true. Like at the end of the day, you are getting paid for like technical contributions. But I feel like that's a little like myopic of the exact like role that you play in the business. Um, mm -hmm. And then also pretty common is like the businesses below me. I don't want to talk to customers. I don't want to talk to non-technical coworkers. Um, it's just like kind of leave me in my like segregated, far away world. Um, I think that if you take those approaches, you're leaving a lot of value on the table. Obviously, like we're employees of companies, we should, or like contractors, like they're paying us for our time and we should deliver as much value to them as possible. But I'd argue we're also leaving value for us on the table if we're kind of abstaining from the business side of things. Um, so my goal for you in the next few minutes is to convince you to be maybe more open and curious about the rest of the business. Um, if you're already like there and nodding along and you're like, yeah, I love the business, like great, you're good, don't worry about it. But if you're like, ah, I don't really like the business, <laughs> maybe maybe like work with us a little bit. Um, the reason is not just like bare altruism, like altruism is great, but ultimately if you can get something that's good for someone else and good for you, there's a much higher chance of that thing happening. Um, so. If you get along well with the business, you can accomplish your goals, I would argue, a lot easier. Um, then that's the question, how do you accomplish their goals? Uh, and you figure out how to talk their language, because they talk differently sometimes. Um, so uh, as the case study of this, this is my the business. This is Matt, our product manager, and Sean is our director of support. Um, when Sean's unhappy, Matt hears about it. And if Sean's happy, Matt doesn't hear about it. Uh, so Matt tells us like these are the features that are coming down. These are like as at a customer conference or like these are what like competitors are coming out with. So he kind of writes the high level like direction of the app, <clears throat> and then Sean deals with stuff when we break it or we haven't fixed it or something like he is the director of support. So this whole story began. This whole talk began with this chart. Um, so I'll describe it a little bit. We've got the top line is 450. Um, these are divided by day. And these are instances of a database timeout error getting a, like happening in our logs. Um, so that's a lot of database timeouts. Yeah. Uh, so Sean was not happy because important things weren't happening in the app that were promised to happen. Uh, so for like I mentioned earlier, we send phishing campaigns. So a large company would schedule a phishing campaign to go out 9 a.m. Monday to 150,000 employees, and it wouldn't go out. It would just sit there and be like, hey, working on it. Um, and so the director of that account or the head of that account would contact their managed services rep. There's a lot of money on the table. The managed services like, we'll have this fixed in no time. And they're like sweating bullets and they go to Sean. Sean goes to Matt and Matt's like, what's happening here? So um, I go take a look and I say, oh, there's database timeouts everywhere. Uh, and we have a bunch of sidekick workers that handle like processing these jobs. And some of them were written to not be run multiple times if they failed. They just get one shot and if they fail, they don't requeue, which is not great, but <laughs> <laughs> it's also bad if you send the same fish to the same person twice. So there's there's a lot of room for improving and optimizing things. So um, I looked at this and was like, well, that explains like a lot of our problem. If not like most of the jobs would requeue themselves, but anytime you see this many database timeouts in your logs, like you've got some. Yeah. The world is an interesting place. Um, so uh, I'm going to talk. Now I was talking about like performance related stuff. We talked about benchmarking and profiling. I didn't do any benchmark and profiling around this because I had my benchmark in the Splunk logs of showing the hundreds of database timeouts a day. So um, the long story short is I learned about the slow logs table. Has anyone used that before? Cool. Um, in MySQL, at least, there's a table called slow logs. Sometimes you have to configure it correctly. Was that a question or a raised hand? I have a question. Yes. So my question is that you, I assume you're going to talk about most of these on production. Uh, oh, the timeouts? Well, no, I mean, uh, timeouts aren't happening on staging, I assume. Correct, yes, so this is all production so actions. Are you going to talk a little bit about like, like working on production versus like trying to replicate it on staging? Uh, a little, okay. a little bit, a little bit. Cool. Um, and then if once I've gotten through that, if you're like, hey, the thing <laughs> that I wanted answered wasn't answered, try it again and 
maybe I'll have an answer. Or I'll give you the the Yeah, I'll give you that. So MySQL has a, or MySQL, I'll always call it SQL, sorry. Uh, MySQL has a slow logs table that if you're, any query takes more than a certain, you can give it the parameters, but more than a certain time to execute, it just logs some information about that. Um, so if you have database timeouts, that's a good place to start. Um, we're going to make use of the explain statements, and then in a moment I'm going to talk about rack mini profiler and count verse size. Um, so uh, you can just go read your stuff from your slow log. This is the statement. We just wanted to see what was happening from the last day. Um, super simple. Uh, I think, okay, so the default, uh, it's 10, 10 milliseconds. If a query takes longer than that to execute, it gets logged there. Um, so I don't know if you can see that. We've got some, this is the results of that query. Um, you can see the time that it's taking. Um, that is indeed a minute and 43 seconds, um, which is really bad. Uh, and you can see just like, that's the beginning of the statement um, underneath the SQL text. So uh, we found in the app where that was being generated and started um, trying to figure out what was going on with that query. And it was basically this. It was select star from campaigns where the status was a certain thing, um, and the campaign ID is not in this collection of targets. A target is this notion that we have when we send um, like a recipient of a fish. Uh, so uh, we've got this. Has anyone used explain before on SQL, SQL queries? Great. I love it. When I first found out about it, I was like, explain all the things. Explain star. Didn't give me anything. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> why is life like this? Uh, and it's really handy. So this is the output that you get from it. Um, this is just a screenshot that I pulled from a while ago. So uh, stubbed a little bit of stuff in the query. And then you've got this primary and subquery. And then the important thing I highlighted down there is the number of rows that are being returned in the query. And you can see in the, the rows on the subquery is 1,108, which incidentally is the number of rows that my local development environment had on it. Our production table um, has like 80 million rows yeah, right. on it. Yeah. So this subquery is returning 80 million rows of data uh, as part of this cron job that was being run quite regularly. Yeah. Um, so that was like locking up a massive amount of our uh, database. So uh, rewrote it just a little tiny bit, and um, like once we like found the problem, it was effortless. It was just like minor changes, um, and now it's mm. checking on an index and it's returning the number of targets that are associated with the campaign in question. So when we're running it on production, it's actually going to return like three rows instead of eighty million rows or no rows. We also put a guard clause, so this doesn't even get executed most of the time. Um, so the fix was really easy. Uh, now we're not looking through 70, 80 million rows of data. Um, so to recap, this was the before count of logs, and then this is the after. This top bar is 60, and where it's empty, there is no timeouts for that day. So there's two responses when you look at this. One, cool, way better. Two, why are there still database timeouts? Yeah. And so this uh, was segues back to what I was talking about earlier with the business. Um, so I've been wanting to like, dig into the, like, the Rails performance side of things for ages because we were on Rails 3.2 when I started, and then we went to 4, and then 4.1, 4.2, now we're going to 5. There's like, you just like walk a blindfolded underneath it and just like pluck off all of this fruit. Like there's so much low hanging optimization fruit, but we had just finally gotten like staffed up on dev resources and it was possible to like start writing all these really cool features that everybody else wanted. So no one really wanted to hear about like performance stuff. Like it's working fine. Um, so, Let's see. So I basically can't push hard on the profiling stuff um, and performance stuff until like the business is on board. So um, my goal is a way faster Rails app. Matt, who's our product manager, wants good features to the customers and to stay competitive. And then Sean doesn't want to have anyone complaining to his team about our product breaking. And now that we've gone through all this database timeout stuff, I can be like, hey, remember when we had like that hell month of everyone complaining about their campaigns just randomly not firing? Like that was bad. Um, it's better now, but it's still going to be happening. Let's get some like stories written. Like he'll just, I'll just be like, hey, I wrote these four cards that address this problem. Can we pull them into the next sprint? And he's like, yeah, great. And he'll just like pull them right in. So now it's like work we can do um, because I'm tying and like this is the direction that I am just going in my current like exploration of development. So I'm taking my goals, marrying them to their business goals, and then they're pulling them into the sprint. Um, all right. So last thing. How am I doing on time? It's 
824. Oh, yeah. Great. Um, so Rack Mini pro Profiler and Count Verse Size. Who's used Rack Mini Profiler? It is an amazing tool. You do one line in your gem file, and you know everything. Oh, oh not quite, but you... Maybe it's like looking at the sausage being made sometimes, too, and you're like, really? Is this how it works? Um, okay, so the, and then count verse size. Uh, ha, does anyone know the difference between dot .count and dot .size on an active record uh, collection? Don't, actually, don't tell the answer, because that's fine. That's, I'm about to tell everybody. <laughs> Great, but I'm glad you know. Um, so, if you see, so who uses dot .count on things? Cool. Um, next time you see this, some attribute dot count, I would like you to be um, somewhat suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> so just dot count. Yeah. So, and we'll we'll talk about why in a moment. So um, we're gonna do a quick run through Rack Mini Profiler. Um, there's a bunch of stuff around running it in production or like running it locally in a production environment. I didn't do any of that. I just stuck it in development and then fired up the app locally. Um, so you can see the Rack Mini Profiler gem gives you this icon or this badge, um, which is the number of milliseconds that it took to load the page. Um, I think it's waiting to like document dot ready or something like that. So it's that, that's a five second page load. Um, so if you click it, it'll break it down. Um, these will happen to correspond with the three longest um, like get requests. And so you can see highlighted on the far side is the number of milliseconds that that took to load, and that lines up here. Um, so it's not fast, um, I would argue. I'm not an expert. I would say it's not fast. Uh, I agree with you. Great. Uh, so, if you, so I just started with the biggest one, because low-hanging fruit and all. Uh, so if you click it, it'll give you this little, it'll, it'll give you the resource, and it's a get request to that endpoint. Um, and then it'll be like, oh, that... Uh, rendering campaigns index took you 52 calls to your database. Um, this is on our just like our landing page once you enter the application. Um, again, not an expert, but that seems like a lot <laughs> of database calls. <laughs> Way too many. Um, so uh, if you click the SQL or SQL count, um, it just dumps you into this, and it's a stack trace around every time your page is going to the database. Um, Damn. So if you're, you're able to read this, you're, you should be seeing some n plus 1 stuff, because this is the yeah. same thing going over and over. Um, believe it or not, we're not talking about that today. Um, uh, and so looking through it, we have, this, we have this campaign decorator. We have a chart of all the campaign data, and it decorates it. Um, and there was some suspiciousness going on in there. And I remembered this article that Nate wrote a while ago. Uh, and he's calling like this, and I was like, oh, that sounds really relevant to this thing that I'm trying to resolve right now, because I have active record, and it's slow, and we have all of these inside that query. Um, so I read the article and promptly had nothing actionable out of it, because that's how I read things. I'm like, cool, this will change my life, and then I <laughs> forget about it. Um, so we have this line of code in there. It's template count equals associated templates dot count. This is not, prop, shouldn't be throwing any red flags for anybody. It wasn't for me. Um, at, the, at first, uh, but then it did because, again, in those logs of the 52 queries, it was just select count star all over the place. Um, and I was like, that's weird. Like, it, there shouldn't be that many. And especially because, well, this was an old feature. We, it, we don't even have anything in this association anymore. We did a many, we, we changed it to many to many relationship between these things, and so now we don't even have, like, associated campaigns.count, you'd have to go, like, whatever. So um, that's when I remembered he was talking about dot .count versus dot .size. And now you can tell me the answer. What's the difference between the two? Count will always execute a SQL query regardless of the state of the active record relationship. Size will load the records into memory and then perform a um, array size on it, which will be consistent. It is as if you're reading the documentation. Mm. That is precisely correct. I love docs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, apparently, it's... I love good docs. Good docs. <laughs> um, so this is what he just said, but written so you can read it at your own speed and uh, less accurate and less comprehensive. So, and I had all the time I wanted and could look at any resource when building the slide. So he's two beers deep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I say hand up. This, this is what I would give to any junior dev. Perfect. Uh, I mean, I guess my question is, dot size going to be harder on memory than dot count? That, uh, yes. 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 Straight up. Yep, yep. 
uh, at the moment, time. Class, it was yeah. <laughs> database timeouts that I was looking at. So I was like, oh, let's just see what's talking to the database. So um, again, so for me, I like to see things, um, like reason about them and be like, oh, I can, like, when I do this thing, I see it happening. So I'm not as, as good yet as probably some people are just reading the documentation and understanding how to now start using it. I want to see it. Um, so uh, I loaded up a price session. This is my development log up top. So when I'm talking to the database, it gets printed there. And then this is just a price session um, in that line that was giving us trouble. Uh, so I can call the associated templates.size. I'm sorry, it's about to be dot count. And it goes and hits database. And I call that count again. And it hits database again, and again, and again. And then I change it to size. And it doesn't go to the database. Leave it as size, it doesn't go to the database. And then if I bring dot count back, it goes to the database again. <clears throat> Um, so I was like, great, sold. I now understand a little bit more on the difference between dot .count and dot .size. So Nate suggested in his article, um, treat them as interchangeable, obviously caveats, as far as I know. Like, so one is heavier from a memory perspective. Um, I would posit, actually, what do you all think? Is it better to save database hits and take a little bit of the memory hit? Yes. <laughs> One of the worst. I mean, but the other thing is you, just, you, know, you look at what you're trying to do with your logic at that point in time, and you maybe write a more tuned SQL query right. that your database is going to be very happy with. Right. And then you maybe memoize the data yep. that you can pull back. Yep. You, you may know. not have to count star. Yeah, you yeah. wouldn't do a count star, for right. sure. <laughs> well, the other thing is, keep in mind, if, are you really wanting to know what data is in this thing I've got in memory, or might you actually want to know what data is now in the database? Right. Could it have changed out from underneath us? Mm -hmm. Totally correct. Yeah. I find what's most often the most useful way to determine which one to use is, does count preclude you loading those records? Because if it doesn't, load the records and check the size. If the yep. size is zero, you didn't load anything and you can skip it. Right. But if the size is greater than one, well, you've already loaded the records. Go ahead and output whatever you want and you've avoided the n plus one. Yep. Yep. Isn't there, like, is there a link or something that does one or the other? Oh, link, link that does one or the other? The size. Is it? Yeah. It, it may oh. depend on the class, okay. but mm -hmm. there is a link, though. I thought there was a third. I've not even heard of the three for sure. Okay. There's, there's one, it does, it does a, a RAND, and it just. <laughs> 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 just a fucking alias method. Uh, yeah. Oh, so, is preferred for strength. I made the changes uh, and made one tiny other little change, and we went to 52 queries on page load to 33, which. Also soaked up a half second of faster load time. A half second out of this is like we've got more room to go, but I, it was I was like, okay, cool. Like I'll take it. Go ahead. So I'm curious. I'm just looking at the yep. profile. You went from 93.4 to 54.6. Those are milliseconds, I assume. 93.4 there. Yep. Yes. So I'm just curious why you didn't focus on the 20 SQL statements that were a lot bigger. Taking way longer. Step up. Yeah. Uh, so the technical reason to that is because I fell to the prey of large numbers. I was like, ooh, 52. Gotcha. Uh, that was it. I, so actually tying back to the like getting stories written and whatnot, this I was doing just in like nights and weekends because I didn't have any stories around like doing this kind of work in the application. But I was like, I wonder like what is here if you like take some of this pro like profiling <coughs> stuff and map it into our application. Um, so if I had a story written that was like, hey, benchmark and then find low hanging optimization fruit, I would be morally obligated seems like the, a strong word, but you're correct. I should start with the larger, slower thing and then go from there. Um, yeah, so uh, what's next for this? If the dot count versus dot size thing is correct, it would, we've got 73 results in our app directory and like all that stuff, and it could be worth looking through and being like, hey, should this be hitting the database every time we call dot count, or should we call dot size and memoize or something like that? Um, so, in conclusion, I have two slides of in conclusions. One, um, we're qualified and obligated to talk to the business. I see raised hands back no, no, there. No, that's me raising the roof. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> already said there is all there is or all I have to say on that. Others have said it better and more extensively, so go find them. Um, but when you do talk to the business, use their language and not yours. Uh, just like you find it kind of annoying when they submit the bug report of I clicked the link and it didn't work, and you're like, hmm. Do know? What? Really? <laughs> Tell me more. Uh, what page were you on? Let's start. With yeah, let's start with the page. Or like a screenshot, or like didn't work. It hung. It didn't reload. It did reload. Nothing 
came back. Like we got a lot of options. Um, and this broke my short lines of text rule, but uh, you can get the other teams to generally pri like they'll move heaven and earth to prioritize the stuff that you think they should prioritize if you can bring it to them in the right way. So I think that this is actually a useful heuristic or like um, bumper rails for things like some folks are like I really want to bring this piece of technology into the app or I really want to do whatever.js. Um, if you can't sell it to the business, <laughs> don't complain about the business. Get better at like selling it. Selling it or like mm -hmm. don't try to waste the business's money because uh, maybe. The, it, I have never proposed an idea that would not be a brilliant one if executed. <laughs> uh, I don't know about the rest of y'all. Um, so rather than see it as like a point of frustration, you could see it as like useful guide rails. And you're going to probably get paid every two weeks one way or the other, whereas a lot of folks like, I don't know, we can, we should, I, th I think, feel a little bit of empathy for like the difficulties of some other folks. Or if you're having to go out and like get clients today to meet payroll in a month, like don't complain about that person like wanting to have input on your dev decisions. All right. I think what I'd add on that is that, you know, as a software developer, it's sort of like, you know, in your best interest to evolve to where you can understand all the things that go around what you're doing with your software. Because ultimately yeah. software serves a purpose. If you don't understand that purpose, you know, then you can't effectively communicate or advocate, yep. as you've indicated, for things that you think are valuable. Yeah, because maybe you are advocating for the right thing, and it's the right call for the business. It's not just that they're wrong and you're right, like, or maybe they are wrong and you are right, but you're not positioning it the right way, and it's going to go yeah. way easier for everyone if you can get buy-in um, from them. I've, I've been in a job search for a little while, and I've been I've been less successful than I thought I would be, um, and uh, I've been applying to a lot of senior dis positions, and uh, the, the lack of success led me to like get serious and research and stuff, and one of the things I've looked up is, like, you know, I've been looking up what's the difference between a mid-level and a senior level, and one of the most common things that appears on that list is that a, a mid-level developer can get anything done, but a senior level developer like knows what should be done, mm. right? Mm -hmm. yeah, what's yeah. valuable and what's not, and how to mm -hmm. how to think outside the developer box. Yeah, so. the wrong thing done really well is still the wrong thing. <laughs> right. right. Yep. Yeah, yeah that's a really good point. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then, uh, other in conclusion, if you haven't checked out your slow queries table, you totally should. Um, it's cool stuff. Yes, sir? Uh, what's the analogous thing for Postgres? Not a clue. But I could Google that for you. I was actually going to ask uh, the people. Oh. <laughs> I defer to the judgment of the others in the room. <laughs> no, for slow queries. Is there a slow queries table for... No, just table. Isn't it a slow queries table? Are you serious? The fact that no one... Professional developer. No one yelled out an answer. No one uses the Postgres right now. He's Googling it, maybe. What? I am. Okay. I would like to know. Like, yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. Yeah, we'll get back to that. We, we, we pay someone a lot of money to give us the slow players. We <laughs> just get all of them. And then you we have get hovers and all your money. We use Vivid Cortex, which does seem really cool. That sounds like a made-up name if I've ever heard one. Oh, we've been using it for a while. Yeah, yeah we use Vivid Cortex. It's yeah. nice. It's pretty, it's pretty cool, yeah. Uh, I use my eyes. <laughs> my PG stats. Yeah, PG so stats. PG stats. PG stats will have a lot of information. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't think it's one to one to slow queries, no. but you will be able to figure out some of this. Yeah. Thing. You can see a lot out of that. To enable a flag too. Yeah. To like you may have to. Slow yes. queries isn't enabled by default. Yeah. Um, and, and because and it makes your query slow. Else. <laughs> <laughs> In the overhead of logging, you don't want to run them for right. all the time. <laughs> Yeah, so a lot of, a lot of teams will use like New Relic or something like that that'll expose a lot of this information. Yep. Yep. Which, yeah. in another talk maybe, will be about how we got Datadog up and useful. Sure. Uh, right. July. Uh, have, <laughs> I'm learning my lesson. All last week I was like, I have to give a talk and not throw up. <laughs> you so, did well, great. Take a, yeah, so far, Good so job. Good. Um, and then explain is really useful if you haven't used that before. I really yes. yep, yep. really like it. It'll tell you if you're calling indexed or non-indexed columns. Mm -hmm. uh, like the some word about like cardinality or something that I had to Google and was like, oh, that sounds smart. Um, Selectivity. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, so it, <laughs> um, it's a good way to like spot check some stuff. At least unless until you're so good with your statements that you know what this explain will say. Um, like, so we wrote this cron job, pushed to production, and then found out a while later that it 
had been secretly killing the application. So, right. like, an explain on that would have been a really, like, so much time would have been saved if we were just like, oh, yeah. let's, like, take a look at that real quick. Um, so, but this was a great lesson to learn. Now, like, every, like, PR uh, review I ever do, I'll have an eye out for that kind of stuff. Uh, Rack Me Profiler is amazing. Keep your eyes out for anything fishy. This is F I S H Y, not E H. <laughs> well, so, so, one note I might drop in there on explain <clears throat> that specifically as a gotcha working with it locally is that the query optimizers change based on table size. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. right. your explain yeah. locally is almost useless. We actually have a Slack command to GitHub that you can run explain against the production clusters oh, because there's no point in running it against your local dev because they're like, 10,000 orders. Can't, can't, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is this why you guys keep going down? You guys are running explains again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Low hanging fruit. I'm just grabbing it. <laughs> uh, maybe that sounds like a great talk idea. Yeah. <laughs> the last 10 that. reasons why GitHub went down. <laughs> uh, and then use size.count asterisk wisely if you don't just. Just understand the difference. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that's, that's it. That's what going to do. <laughs> This is a link to Nate's stuff, the actual query that we ran to get the slow queries and then some other notes if you want. So that's that. Yes, sir. Could you post that to the meetup? Yes, and there and slides will be there. So yeah, I'll put all that in the in the meetup. Cool. Any questions? I feel like you're pretty good about asking questions as you go, and I thank you for that. Uh, yeah. Did you remember to record your screen? Because I did not. I did he reminded me uh, to I, record my screen. Someone's no. recording over here. Well, we're about to, yeah, and I have that. We're about, my wife was like, send me a recording, and I was like, done. Well, it will be done. Well, that's okay. The camera overheated in the middle of his thing, so I can figure it out. Perfect. Hey, hey can, it looks like it recorded. Can I get a copy of this one? Sure. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Oh, that's not yours. That's this. That, uh, yeah, no. Oh. Yeah, but yes. I was just helping. It's yeah. the yeah, inner photojournalist in me yeah. saying, yeah. get in frame, my friend. Hey, use yes. your, use which is an ethical, degree. Which is an ethical dilemma in photojournalism. <laughs> uh, and don't forget to post uh, jobs if you want to to the meetup. I think that's good just to kind of keep that conversation going. Yeah, um, And then also, if you're not in the Slack channel, uh, we're, there's a lot of guys, a lot of people here who hang out in the... Ruby channel on Tech Friends, and that would be a good we place. Have Friends, we have Rylan like optimizes yeah. performance. <laughs> yeah, right there, when my brain is dead, I'm like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Say my words. <laughs> Sorry. Go be my Google. Go Stack be Overflow. Um, but yeah, it's just a good thing. So 